Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. What features does Star Citizen need to be considered a more complete game? Well, it's actually quite a lot, but the basics of a minimum viable product or something feature complete over content complete is actually something I'd quite like to talk about today. Just to be clear, content complete would be maybe having the 100 star systems for the persistent universe that they've roughly got planned. That's obviously many years off, but something more feature complete might just be a few star systems with all the tools and supporting features completed for that, so jump points connecting them. This is a rough list of features to completion for the game, and I will have something up on my website I will maintain, which I'll link down below, for something like a more unofficial but expanded roadmap for Star Citizen's Persistent Universe, and I'll just have a rough list on my website to start with, but I'll maybe evolve it into something pretty. I'll get someone to make it pretty. For this video, we'll be looking at what's sort of like beyond what's currently in game now, what's beyond Alpha 3.10 and um, a lot of the 3.11 features because we want to look at stuff that we know that is needed to completion that's not really on the roadmap. Also, there's a huge amount of potential gameplay and mechanics that could be created for each of the features and components, but we're only going to briefly mention them more generally. Star Citizen is going to massively iterate on and evolve its mechanics over the life of its playable alpha. Also, other new features might pop up in the future that they plan to put in the game. I might have missed a few um, pieces or features, um, something that you might think that should be included, but I don't consider essential. So I suppose in that form, it's my understanding of the features that they want to have in their game, and I'm open to discussion and feedback. Um, so feel free to drop comments in below like, oh, I think it should have this, or it should have this, or they said it was going to have this, bam, bam, bam. Something that's very much a focus for the game's development at the moment, and they're completing, is the myriad of ships and supporting systems. A finalized flight and combat model for both space and atmosphere is needed, physicalized components with a power and resource transfer system, subcomponents and even subsystem targeting. This will have ships being able to be disabled, individual components damaged and destroyed, and that's going to mean that ships will lose functionality rather than just explode. There's a physical damage system as well that works out more accurately what a projectile does when it hits a ship, um, is there armor there, well, what type of damage is it, all that sort of stuff as well, um, how far does it penetrate, what components does it hit. Ship customization is so much required and very, very, very hype for the game. Uh, In-depth customization, both manufacturer and aftermarket customization, so you can paint your ship, put your your um, ship's name on it, and have your, your ship very much looking like the ship that you want. Ship modularity for major room functionality changes, ship tuning and different choices for things like thrusters, scanners, more ship components that we don't have in the game yet, like uh, different types of computer system, different types of radar, shield updates with the new sign distance field shields that have effects wrapping around vehicles and deforming appropriately. A fleshed out insurance system for all of your assets. They need to get as many of the remaining ships and vehicles flyable as possible. A brief quick list, Banny Merchantman, Polaris, Nautilus, Titan Suits, the Hull series, the Sydney Spider Mining Tick, uh, the Starlifter, Star Runner, Orion, Crucible, Endeavour, Starliner, Redeemer, X1 series, 100 series, Vulcan, Vulture, Pioneer, Nova Tank, the Apollo, the Santok Yai, the F8, the Kraken uh, and Privateer, the Ranger, the Ares, the Corsair, the SRV tractor beam ship, all the Vandal ships, capital ships like the Idris, Javelin, uh, maybe the Bengal, Redemption and Pegasus, maybe some more extra ships as well. Um, but we also need things like a more appropriate ship hailing and chatter and interactivity, being able to communicate with NPCs and ships in the verse easily. Uh, VoIP and FOIP additions, sort of like to, to update those features to be more appropriate. Ship and vehicle in ship spawning, docking to allow for larger ships to be spawned, despawned, and use stations, as well as uh, make use uh, of all their facilities. Uh, gravity, decompression, life support, and fire in ships are all super important as well. New damage and weapon types, beam weapons, for example, boarding and ship capture are major components of piracy and, well, just generally how people are going to play the game. Lots of people are going to want to capture ships and attack people and defend themselves. A permission system is needed to allow certain players to access ships, areas of ships, uh, systems on a ship. So you could, for example, if you're the owner of a ship, give a, an engineer access to the engine room and their quarters, for example, but not the bridge. I'm roughly including things like door control and other security features here too. Really, the expansion of this multi-crew gameplay and group features allows for players to organize and act as a group, share ships and assets, do missions together. So you're going to need deeper organization features as well for large scale orgs and for these sort of like player groups. I'd like to see 
players in a group or in an org and when you scan them it shows that they're in that group together or org together that would be very useful and you can have org wars and things like that as well with that all the ships and weapons obviously need to be balanced as well beyond the evolving current gameplay loops as well there's a huge amount that are needed medical gameplay from treating wounds in facilities and medibeds to being a field medic getting friendlies up and using the correct items for the right issue jam a medipen in someone they're going to be up for a little while um, but you need to get them maybe to a proper medical facility um, a little bit later you can maybe grab people stabilize them that sort of stuff repairing hulls individual components junction boxes both with a ship and by hand uh, salvage so siphoning gases and liquids breaking up ships and then putting them into like a nommy more in the reclaimer and sort of making them into cubes stripping hulls and removing more valuable components by hand gas harvesting refueling refining farming they're all mechanics that are supposed to be in the game. Tweaking and improving items as part of the science and, and overclocking mechanics, which aren't overclocking like pressing a button to overclock in a ship, but more, as I said, tweaking and mechanically sort of like, uh, this item is now 3% better. Uh, things like crafting are likely to be included in the game to some extent. This might just be refining type processes or making fuel or crafting um, narcotics or whatever with science facilities, but it could also be as in-depth maybe as making munitions supplies and potentially even components and ships we don't know yet um, some form of crafting but to what extent we don't know passenger transports from planets to systems and npc services doing that as well are, are planned and obviously important hacking and e-war gameplay spoofing signatures breaking into ships that sort of stuff data running data is cargo we want data runners in game to actually function expanded radar and scanning this is going to have lots of different types of scanners but scanners are not just for discovery or combat and detection but also to allow for stealth gameplay there is no optical camouflage in star citizen it's only the management of your environment your signature and your scanners it's also admittedly the choice of components and systems that you put on your ship as well and timing i suppose uh, bounty hunting 2.0 so having players hunt down and capture players and npcs store them in pods and have them taken to a security station or, or prison that sort of thing and um, they obviously wanted sort of like people as cargo as well in general so you could sell it to banished slavers or something in the future drones and mines we know there's going to be remote drones semi-automated ai drones and um sort of mines from the nautilus i'm not sure if i should include this here but the news van and sort of render the texture tech allowing you to stream whatever you're recording somewhere else in game to a tv or something might be used to some degree as a gameplay mechanic we're not 100 sure yet a uh, deeper law systems and piracy mechanics so there's lots of missions and content that they can sort of like make that will more specifically support piracy and counter piracy scramble space races are obviously planned as well so that's the races around like grim hex and that sort of stuff command and control functionality and interfaces allowing for the greater organization of players and npcs and fleets and, and small groups whatever to sort of like take commands and orders and um, you can do battles and operations and plan them out and go i want you to go here and things like that that's that's the idea with command and control tractor beams small handheld tractor beams to help move um smaller cargo packages but also large and ship based tractor beams to help move ships salvage mineables and cargo cargo 2.0 with physicalized cargo in appropriate containers and larger containers so servers don't struggle with the amount of entities uh, gravity tools and push and pull mechanics uh, items being placeable in containers so you can like put um, your gear or pistols or grenades or something in a container and that be detected by the cargo grid and then you can sell that later or trade it or whatever cargo facilities for stations and landing zones with loading and unloading and fees and timers associated with that missions associated in general with cargo with escorts and freight where you'd be given a ship and cargo to transport but you probably have to pay a deposit or something because that's not your ship you're, you're doing it for another company a huge host of missions for each of the gameplay loops and ship types um, are, are going to be in game from search and rescue to espionage as well uh, some of this can be supported by a contract system some of which is a bit too abstract for a contract system to support so uh, i'm interested to see where they're actually going to go with a contract system and the way you can pay people for doing certain things um it, that, that'll be interesting reputation so reputation for missions factions guilds um, and mission givers there's going to be guilds in game that um, give you access to um, different sort of like 
um, items and gear and potentially like a bounty hunter's guild that will allow you to know uh, where a bounty was last seen or um, allows you to engage bounties more easily that sort of stuff um, maybe gives you access to the bounty hunter clothing and there's going to be factions obviously like the nine tails pirate faction you can gain reputation with them there's going to be individual mission givers which you can gain reputations with and that's going to allow you to do more things and allow you to um, either get on the bad side or the good side of certain people and groups let's talk a little bit about the universe sim and the quanta system for handling missions so this is going to spawn dynamic missions and content uh, a dynamic economy is going to be sort of like handled by this with uh, nodes that consume and convert commodities into goods so um, commodities that are moved from one area to another nom 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 turned into an actual component or something eventually and this is going to support a npc simulated economy that has player sort of like involvement and influence but is not entirely player run is what nine ten npcs for every player is the sort of rough idea here this will support a wider economy with players being able to sell goods um, items and ships changing prices and um, players will be able to buy at other players shops they did say they wanted places to sell things like um, stolen ships as well. So maybe the scrapyards will take stolen ships, but at a fraction of their cost. Resources that are mined will be somewhat finite or at least change over time. They want a loot system, the ability to trade between players with um, a proper interface with that. A physicalized limited inventory for players and NPCs so that loadouts matter, along with having to store items in your tabs or your ships or whatever, so you can access them when you need them or maybe not have access to them when you need them. There will be NPC guilds, as I said, that will give players more opportunities for your chosen careers. Expect to see fees and taxes on transactions or rewards to maybe help artificially restrict players in an area. I think as well that organizations might need to um, have some form of cap or something that encourages them not to be of an unlimited number. Um, of sort of players like they do in EVE maybe well, well I'll have to wait and see that's just a I reckon comment to fill out all the gameplay and to make the universe a living breathing universe they need NPC and AI quanta system that handles the spawning and despawning on physicalization versus simulation of NPC so it makes them physicalized when it needs to but then despawns them when it doesn't and then keeps them just as sort of like probability volumes and numbers more to that we need functional smart ai that spawn with the correct loadouts and they have like social interaction and um, are able to um, have their npc schedules so um, they have 24 hour schedules and move around the universe doing their jobs we know things like ai blades that will automate turrets and hireable npc crews are needed but also npcs as part of missions so um, they might be wingmen they might be escorts they might be people that you save they might be someone that you grab in a cave and get them out of a cave you need to be able to send orders uh, to npcs as well and um, whether that's part of like more command and control or just because you need to tell them to go into your ship or wait there or something like that the dynamic systems and the quanta system is all basically a huge amount of appropriately generated content uh, based on player and npc actions and interactions and that sort of evolves into lots of interesting content and variations on content in the game essential to the economy and the universe sim for a minimum viable product and for any release uh, really beyond an alpha is no more resets at all. A final reset for the game to be live and all your um, money and ships that you buy in game, all that sort of stuff to persist in game and to have everything purchasable and usable in game as well. The gameplay area needs to expand. Finishing off the Staten system is obviously going to come first with the gas giant Crusader and its landing zone Orison, the massive um, asteroid field at the Aaron Halo. They want to open up jump points and have the new star system Pyro as well, but other star systems are needed and a hundred plus star systems eventually, but that could take many years for that hundred plus uh, number. They require more assets, archetypes, station facilities, new biomes, um, jungle, lava, Banu cities, alien cities, and more points of interest in general. Planets and moons are supposed to be orbiting. That's probably quite a monumental task, getting that working fully. Or maybe it's not, but we still need them. Um, saving and sharing locations and deeper mapping and navigation systems so that you can traverse in the verse more appropriately and you know explore 
share locations with, with your friends. They have previously talked about underwater exploration potentials and boats and buoyancy, but to what extent we're getting water and underwater gameplay, we don't know yet. I would expect that ships floating slash sinking is probably the most simplest and necessary mechanic. They will be adding security and defenses, then removing armistice zones as well, and have all of these sort of um, security and defense systems handled by laws and all in game. Players will be exploiting the gameplay area with land claims, base building, um, and physical player habs and hangers. There was even a stretch goal of player managed stations, but I think that's less minimum viable product in my opinion, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. There are various character and FPS features that are needed, expanding the player status system for different damage types and hazards and buffs and debuffs, uh, hygiene, tiredness, etc. And this being part of NPC schedules as well. Character customization, gene splicing for players so that you can have a more unique looking player and customization after you've created a character so you can have tattoos and things like that and then also NPC variants to be able to be based on those as well. Players will be able to swim and there's going to be FPS gadgets and there's going to be more weapon types and ammo types for weapons with different status effects. Some of them are going to be less than lethal as well so you can knock and stun people. Uh, death of a spaceman is an important part of the game. That means you are mortal and you can eventually die although you will respawn a good few times is the idea and there might be ways of um, you know renewing the amount of lives you have. The idea basically is that they want deeper risk and reward and you'll be able to transfer your sort of like goods uh, and assets to your new character that you create so it's not sort of like the end of the world or anything but uh, they did want to have stories about specific characters they do want mortality to, to mean something i'm very interested to see how that's going to play out as a feature and how they're going to evolve that uh, also they want some way of players being able to eject in atmosphere and survive uh, however that is uh, there is still a load of human assets and architecture for them to do for all the other alien races as well because they want uh, banu cities and that sort of stuff as Xi'an cities and systems. These races also need the character models, animations, loadouts, and AI to function. So that's the Banu, the Xi'an, the Vandal, which are already quite far away uh, along the Vandal, uh, and the Tavaran, which are sort of been assimilated by the UEE so maybe there's less work involved with that. Uh, alien animals and creatures are also very much part of the game. We've seen a sandworm, a space cow, a space whale, microtech yeti, giant pyro crab and zypopods. Um, they've all been shown off previously by Cloud Imperium when there's a, a few other alien races uh, as well around, so the Kurthak um, and some sort of like uh, less advanced ones that are on some of the planets. Playable alien races are a possibility in the far future, um, so they've sort of said they wanted that but not for a uh, first release, that's very unlikely. Uh, we also know that pets were a stretch goal as well, so maybe that will be a thing. Uh, the engine and tech of the game needs to support it being an MMO and also being very pretty. So there's server meshing. This is one of the sort of like super major things for Star Citizen to become a reality. Lots of major network improvements, full persistence and the iCash all lend towards this. This plans to allow thousands of players potentially in each area. Um, ships and items that persist in the area that you leave them. Stable servers that don't implode all the time, that have a nice stable frame rate or, or tick rate. Uh, engine polish, so the Gen 12 renderer and Vulcan are essential to having a scalable, better looking and performing game uh, for the client side of machines and having just more on screen, being able to do more, being able to make more of pretty things. Pretty game. Uh, there are various engine updates including cloth physics and deformation that all need to be done to and um, quite a lot of stuff like that you'll, you'll see throughout uh, the game's lifespan. Lots of like lighting updates and stuff like that. Some other bits that were more afterthoughts or I didn't know where to include them. They want to have player influence politics. Um, they want to see sort of like large AI fleets moving around, invasions, public missions, um, things that change over time in the game. If somewhere is making a load of money and having all the missions fulfilled and there's a load of trade going on, then maybe their streets will look very clean in that city and, and everyone will be moving around um, sort of like with nice clothing on. But if crime's rampant and um, they don't have much money and there's very little trade going on, maybe more crime's happening there and the streets are a bit more dirty, stuff like like that. So these are all the sort of things that they wanted to have there. There's a cutting tool and lots of modular additions for the multi-tool that are needed. Uh, physics and item puzzles um, and mini games for loads of those gameplay loops. They obviously have been building the building blocks UIs as well. So expect to see the UIs 
updated for a huge amount of stuff and used in lots of different ways, including for missions and sort of like interactive UI stuff um, for, uh, as part of gameplay. Uh, they want expanded multi-crew experiences, so lots of different stuff to do on ships and for that to be um, really quite uh, fun. Um, lots of MobiGlass apps as well. There's lots of other bits like VR support, which are possible in the far future, but aren't really needed for a uh, initial release, in my opinion. And that's sort of it for my what Star Citizen's Persistent Universe needs to be a minimum viable product and something that I would consider reasonably feature complete, but certainly not content complete. And something that I would say is probably more like a beta um, than an alpha, um, but not a released product. Maybe, maybe they could release at that stage, that, that sort of stuff. So all that sort of stuff there is uh, at least when I would consider the game a beta um, and potential um, MVP release. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and expect these features to have a lot more content and gameplay to them. Some of them quite simple gameplay, some of them super in-depth. If I've missed anything out, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll correct bits in a pinned comment myself later. Things like how or if capital ships will persist when players are offline and do player wrecks persist and crash into moons and becomes points of interest are more expanded parts of other systems that we sort of mentioned. The Quanta system will probably handle um, sort of like crashes and derelicts and things like that and um, there's more of a probability for them to spawn in, things like that. But what do you think? Do you think that Star Citizen needs more features than this for a minimum viable product for something that's uh, no more resets, maybe a, a beta? Or, or are there features that I mentioned that it could certainly do without. When do you think all of this will be ready? I'm thinking that we are a good few years away, maybe 2024 sort of thing at the earliest um, with, with all that stuff. Whatever your thoughts though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And as I said, I'll maintain something on my website uh, and sort of like expand it out, try and make it look pretty in the future. Uh, but at the moment, it might just be a bit of a rough list. Every month, there's a ship giveaway. For the month of July, we have a Banu Merchantman and Star Citizen game package to give away. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during July 2020. Details to that down below in the links. I'm also a shill for NordVPN if you're looking for a VPN then Nord should be considered. It's cheap and fast and helps keep you secure, anonymous, and give you greater access to websites and informations. Use the links below if you're thinking about getting a VPN. Also, a special thank you to Azatec for supporting my content. Find out more down below because they sent me a Alienware um, Aurora A10. But there's more to it than that, and you can see all the details of my spec down below and all that sort of jazz. If you'd like to further support my channel or content, then please consider becoming a YouTube member, a Patreon, or even donating. But sharing, commenting, subscribing, and liking, all of that really does help too. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.